of the faces, seeing her feet as she's being carried out of here, all just very partial glimpses from an event with, uh, in Jane's recollections. And the little black box is very similar to the box used in Ted's uh, cloning soul transfer event. And you notice these weird black uh, tubes coming out. We're going to see that later in other drawings. Jane's most intense uh, recent encounter, she tried to relay in a series of paintings being on the desert planet, so many people report, seeing the UFO coming in, being under control where she couldn't move, and then watching a series of changes where the UFO seemed to beam down this, uh, this illuminated globe type um, structure with she, markings she couldn't really capture in all their detail. And then this going to another stage of transformation from this globe-like decorated object to a floating dark globe with antenna that began to come very close to her, so close that she became fearful she was going to be knocked off the mesa where she was sitting. And the last conscious memory she had of this event was of this globe coming up right to her face. Under regression, we found out some more information about what went on, including an implanting uh, procedure that the, this globe was involved with in Jane's uh, suppressed memories. This is Angie, the woman in Tennessee. Uh, one of the rectangular uh, scorched areas or dead areas on her property uh, from an event, this now for a year and a half, of course, nothing grew there. This was an event she had recalled seeing the night before, or briefly before, I can't recall if it was just exactly the night before, in which there was this rectangular device with two aliens out in the yard near the, the barn area apparently taking soil samples, which of course, you know, they've been doing since time immemorial. They just can't get enough of our soil. <laughs> but the mark on the ground was physically there for quite a while. And uh, if anybody's willing to pay for some soil sample testings, we've got some. Here's the area of the rural cattle ranch where the mutilations and unexplained deaths have occurred. And you're going to see video from this area of overflights. I just wanted you to see how remote this was from any you know, highly populated area. One of the unexplained deaths, this was not a mutilation, it was the bile, I mean the report from the vet was unknown toxicology and there were a number of other cases both in the Tennessee and Alabama area during this time. But there were also mutilations uh, among the cattle on Angie's property. There's one that seems to be almost an interrupted mutilation. I'd love to get Linda's analysis of this. You see a triangular patch of skin has been cut but not taken off yet. The jawbone has been cleaned. It's like something either was human activity mimicking alien mutilations or an interrupted mutilation of some sort on a calf there. Angie's fetus after an alien implant that she uh, later miscarried, she actually retrieved the fetus but under control of course took care of making sure it did not well, it was re retrieved by aliens, she believes, uh, the day later. But she saw the size of it and the features of it. She said when they came back to induce the miscarriage that this was the instrument, the long instrument that was used to induce uh, the miscarriage vaginally. And then this little container was, she said she had no idea what the little container was for, but she did remember that also being present on the bed in her bedroom when they came to cause this loss of the child. Some of the marks from some of Amy's, uh, Angie's experiences, again, the sets of punctures um, after, correlated with consciously remembered events. One of the fetal nursery representations, this is uh, what Angie saw, and this one is included in the book, so you can read more carefully what description she has for the various things. Very similar to what else we've heard about. Angie is, a, is an illustrator artist, so she has done a lot better with some of her recollection drawings than many others. But again, in the corner, you see the little black box with those hoses running out of it, just like Jane had seen in Texas. Um, in fact, Angie has a number of excellent illustrations, but we could do that all day. Here's one of them, the one of the suited grays, which she said rarely would she see them in clothes. This one had an outfit on. And she didn't know what the little jumble of shapes on the table was. She said, maybe it was art. I don't know. Nothing was explained to me. She also had encounters with, a no well, actually seven different alien physical types. This one with the bumpy uh, skin, the bumpy 
uh, joints of the fingers, etc. And some of the aliens with which she had contact were completely human looking, although they didn't act human, they did look human, notably brown haired and blonde haired humans. Here's one of the uh, the brown haired woman and man, and he's got some equipment, we can't really see it very clearly here, as if he's scanning, I don't know, the air or something, taking readings of some sort, and the woman escorted Angie into, uh, back to the craft for her encounter later on. This was just out on her property. This one, both Angie and her husband recalled the little troll-like or dwarf-like entities coming into the room, and in fact it was her husband who was taken away in this encounter. And they both remembered all of this consciously. And these troll or dwarf-like entities turn up, uh, as you'll see in the correlated uh, chart of comparisons there in the book, with more than just Angie in the book, and with a lot of other people too. Again, we see uh, one of the emblems. We've got the triangles. I think they show up almost every time, unless we have the serpent showing up. She said this was on a belt that one of the entities was wearing. Our timing is a little strange here. Okay, one of the craft that Angie recalls seeing out over the property, and I have not seen a report exactly like this one before, but I uh, wanted to include some of the anomalous uh, drawings rather than just the typical things that we often get reports about. Another one over the area, and that's the bottom view of it. It seemed like a fiery or molten area, very similar to what's reported in the bottom of the Gulf Breeze crown type craft. And that craft here, you can see for comparison of size, Angie below and the craft above when she was being beamed into it. Again, out in this area that's very near the northern Alabama border where so much activity has gone on in the past, what, three or four years. This is a ground plan of one of the rural military facilities to which Angie was taken. Uh, a series of buildings, of areas where craft were parked, of a perimeter fence, this was, and of, of a rural dirt road. She was taken into one of these buildings and interrogated. And there were a number of other humans there. She said apparently also abductees besides military personnel. Close up of the, the view of the building into which she was being taken and one of the people who was escorting her. And uh, she was taken along with three other women on one occasion into uh, this facility. We know of another facility into which she's been taken uh, under conscious control. Uh, it's not the same as this one. This strange little craft, uh, from one point of view, looks like a winged aircraft uh, from the military. You've got a little flag on it. The other side, not there. And that back compartment is where she and the three other women were, were put, placed when they were picked up and taken to a facility. In one of the underground places that Angie recalls seeing was what she called the upturned helicopter or the rotorless helicopter. And again, we have gotten reports from around the country over the, you know, through the past of similar copter type devices that apparently are not copters. Two pictures, Angie was taking pictures of overflight trails and here it just does not show up. So, but if we could look at these up close, these are taken identical, you know, moments apart, snap, snap. And in one is uh, a very small object that under uh, enlargement appears to be a spacecraft. It's not there in the other one. So we need more analysis on that. Now on to Amy in Texas. This is a drawing of her conscious recollection of her first UFO sighting in Denton, Texas um, in the early 1980s. And there was a missing time episode and a very confusing screen memory overlaying what she consciously recalled from this. Amy recalls being taught many things by the entities that have encountered, have worked with her, including, as here with her two young daughters, being shown how to pass through solid objects. And since she had mastered it, now they were going on to the daughters. Of course, she can't do it when she's not with the aliens. One of her daughter's drawings of uh, a ball of light that she has seen a couple of times in the house, and this is a young child's drawing. She says she's only seen this one a couple of times. It's two to three feet wide. But the one she has seen more frequently is much smaller, like a probe device that we've heard reported numerous times. Uh, this one being slightly different, as you'll see here, she said it's like a wiggly tail appendage coming off of this one. But she says this is frequently in the room with her. And uh, she doesn't seem to be fearful of anything to do with these probes, uh, these light 
sources, although she's not real happy when the aliens have you know, interacted with her. This is a recent just doodle that the daughter had made at eight and a half years old that the mother managed to get me a copy of. And you can see a lot of the, what's, what she's doodling out here um, obviously has some significance to the abduction experiences she's had. Amy's memory of consciously waking up as she's floating down her hallway into the kitchen and out the back door uh, in one of her events. She said that was the conscious part. After she got outside, she didn't remember anything, but you can imagine waking up floating and being a little bit surprised. <laughs> she quite was. This is the FEMA underground center of government facility across the street from which Amy lived at the time she was abducted and taken to an underground facility with human and alien entities. This is also the same facility that was less than two miles from the house my husband and I lived in when he was abducted by military and taken to an underground facility. Just thought you might want to drop in and tour the place. Her screen memory um, began with this abduction where the alien apologized and removed the implants was seeing what she thought was a big moon with the entities floating above them. Now, a lot of this is from conscious recollection and some of the drawings are also from what she get a glean through hypnosis. <coughs> she recalled being in her dining room where these alien, the, the non-earth representatives as she called them and the human representatives first came to get her to take her to this facility and the men all look quite human. She said, in fact, she almost thought she recognized one of them as a political figure, but she wasn't really certain. She was told they were ex-professional pilots, military people, and so on, but when she got up close to one, she could see the vertical slit eyes and began looking at the other men and said she was aware that they had contact lens coverings over their pupils. And without the coverings, I mean, with the coverings, they just looked, she said you couldn't tell them from your neighbors. Uh, she, was, they were, she was told to not remember this scene, and she fought very hard to do so. The, the facility room into which she was taken, now uh, the little drawing at the front of that is Amy with the female um, alien who was apologizing and removing the implants. She said the entity had a plastic-like mask over its face. And it's very confusing what the purpose of that might have been because if it was to keep the eyes from having any kind of control, certainly it didn't work because the eyes were the only thing that actually did show on her face. And we'll see that a little closer up in just a moment. Um, I think. Yeah. Um, Amy's drawing of the first the move, removal of the implant from the ear, which seemed to be of a malleable, flesh-colored um, substance. And when it was pulled out of the ear and shown to her, it disintegrated. And we have another report, Barbara uh, Barthlick has another case report, where an identical ear implant did exactly this when removed. It just broke into pieces and dissolved, disappeared. But she said when she looked at it before it uh, changed, she could see what were embedded in it, like finely placed little wires or filaments that were in this biological looking or flexible looking material that was very flesh colored. Then the removal of the implant from the base of her neck, um, and there is still a little white circle from where that occurred. Uh, at this point, there was nothing on the, that we, we had evidence of from the ear removal. This implant was uh, more typical of some others we've seen on drawings and x-rays, um, metallic filament rod, uh, rod with little filaments on the end. She shows here, as we talked about earlier, where the implants are, the old implants were being placed, and the new ones, she's told, are going into the spine, the brain stem area. And they, the alien told her about some of the newer implants. Now, this is a the drawings of first the instrument used to remove them, the little uh, biologically flexible looking ear implant, the spot on the back of her neck, and the implant that was taken out of that spot, the rod with little filaments on the end. And this is also in the book, one of the illustrations we were able to include. She said that she was told newer implants are being placed through an area behind and slightly below the ear and into um, the base stem of the, uh, of the brain area and the medulla oblongata. She said they look like little tiny metallic tic tacs and that the alien told her these were the new ones. She remembered uh, getting the close up eyes to eyes things and having information imparted to her about the nature of the implants. Uh, consciously she did not remember much about it but she did remember she was very unhappy about what she was told 